<sighs> All right, it is, what is today? The 11th? August. August. August 11th. This is Dustin. Uh, he's been a friend. Actually, you were in the video. Well, were you actually in the video or was it just your hands? Uh, I don't know. I was putting together that box for you. Yeah, my, you recorded me doing. my first video when I made a, a uh, table saw, but he's been friends with me since fourth grade. He just moved in yesterday. I'm teaching him the stock market, and I figured why not make a video showing how uh, I'm teaching him all this. So the last time I made a video, my screen looked a lot different than this. Um, let me... Let me give you a rundown on what I've been doing for the past month. Uh, basically, I've been studying every person that is really good at stock market trading, like Steve Ducks, uh, Tim Sykes, Warrior Trading, um, Tim Grittani. All these guys make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year doing this trading, and what I've been doing is figuring out their different strategies and what's their strengths and what's their weaknesses, and then kind of creating my own strategy from that. Let's just get into this. So what I've done is pretty much stopped using the studies that I had because I read a book called The Market Mind Games and it kind of explained the psychology of how the stock market works and how studies are always going to be behind the times because they're trying to predict a very complex system. Um, so I got rid of all the, the studies on my charts and I split my screen up into four different sections so that I can watch four stocks at once because just watching one stock and trying to flip through them all was kind of tedious and I was losing track of what I was doing. So what we have here is I've got my red blend. This is a thinkorswim platform, by the way, for anybody that's wondering what the software is. I've got my red links right here on this uh, top left corner. I've got my five minute chart, my one minute chart, and then my daily chart for the month, or sometimes I do three months or six months. It just depends on what the uh, stock's looking like. I have over here level two. Um, do you understand level two? Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Um, level two is very important. If you uh, don't understand how it works, you should take the time to watch some videos over it. And over here is the time and sales that, again, you'll learn that in level two videos if you uh, don't know how or how those work. And right now, the way I'm finding stocks is I've got a scanner for pre-market that looks for just its basics, basic movers. That's pretty much it. Um, pre-market movers, scan. It's looking for $0.30 cents to $30, 5,000 volume or higher, and up to 75 million shares. And that scan is right here. Um, you just go to personal and pre-market movers, and these are all it. I sort by volume and shares, and right now, t today, DRYS, HRTG, and DCIX are what's popping up. I also have a secondary scan for pre-market gap up, which is this is the parameters for that. I've got a gap up penny, which is a little different. It's uh, zero to thirty thousand shares and uh, five cents to seven dollars. And then I have a larger scan for uh, higher float stocks, which is eighty thousand to uh, ten thousand volume with a four percent gap up. Once I start up my software, I just look at whatever is moving for the uh, the most in the pre-market, and then I just go over to Seek Alpha, which I got I got two screens now, so I have to bring this over. And I just look up why these stocks might be moving. And right now, DCIX, I'm watching DCIX and DRYS. I actually traded uh, DRYS yesterday for a 6% gain, but DCIX is looking a lot better today. There's no news on it, so I don't know why it's moving, which is kind of uh, not a good sign. But it's DRYS is definitely bouncing off. It's probably going to break. I'm going to watch it for the uh, opening. And we've got 10 minutes left. And then I also check on Twitter. Um, just to see what people are talking about. I don't 
use Twitter as a way to find calls or uh, picks. It's just kind of gives me an idea of what everybody's talking about and what everybody's looking at. You have any questions yet? I should have recorded yesterday when I was explaining everything to you. Just something I gotta sit here and take in. Yeah. Experience more and more of. We'll start to see here. How much is moving on that stock? Is it a lot of volume or a lot of trades or both? It's both. The uh, so you can see here these little bars, and then you've got the count. So uh, tops is up to eighty thousand on this bar right here. Um, I don't like this volume chart. I would wish it would color. Uh, red and green so that you know if there's more buyers than sellers the the day trading software that you can download like that 170 dollars software i showed you yeah um that'll show like which if uh the buyers or sellers are taking over for that bar okay so does that at all represent how many buyers there are right now or does it just tell you the volume of the stock being moved just the volume of the stock being moved the um, level twos is the real time indication of what's going on. So on tops, there's 50 sellers at 172 and 10 buyers at 170. So that's a good sign that the pressure is going down on the short side. Now for DCIX, um, it's got 11 sellers at 56 and one seller or one buyer at 55, but five at 54. So there's more pressure selling. Um, but this is also pre-market. As soon as the stock market opens, this is going to change in an instant. Um, same for DIY, DIYS. Um, it's about even. It's got six buyers at 12 and one seller at 14. So it's got a little more pressure on the uptick. But at 417, it's got 15. And 414, it's got 10. Uh, 401. So you can, you can look into the future, basically, or like the higher the price, and you can see, okay, there's a lot of uh, sellers here. So there's 360 right now. It's changing constantly because the st uh, stock's about to open. Um, during the first like couple minutes of the market open, the level twos are just going to be all over the place, so you can't really uh, go off of those. What you want to go off of is the time and sales. So... You'll either see like large chunks of green or large chunks of red going, and that'll tell you very quickly on if the buyers or sellers are um, winning. <clears throat> and you can also pay attention to the size. So if you see like a huge size increase, 4,000, 5,000, stuff like that, uh, 10,000 right there. So there's a, a bunch of buyers. There's a lot more buyers than sellers right now. So tops, and tops is climbing up a little bit. Over here, you got a lot of green, and you got tons of green on JNUG. But this is, uh, I've also been practicing swing trading. Um, I'm not just doing breakout and gap ups and stuff like that. I've uh, been learning ETFs trading from uh, Rick, Ricky Gutierrez. I always screw up his last name. Uh, but he swing trades JDST and JNUG, which is a gold ETF almost every day. And uh, I've, I think I'm up 5%. I bought in. Two, two or three days ago, and uh, well, let me, let me, I'll show you how swing trading works real quick. So, JNUG has been bouncing a lot for the past uh, couple weeks. So what I did is I just wa waited for this day to rebound, and it closed. It ended up closing, closed red, but it gapped up the next morning, and then I just watched it and I bought in on this bar and then it gapped up again. I just let it swing for that day and then it's coming up to the next resistance. I'm probably gonna set a sell limit somewhere around 8.30, 8 something like that and I'll make 6% 6 on my trades. And the reason it's nice to swing ETFs instead of stocks is because an ETF is, it works like a bond. And if you don't know what a bond is, it's basically, if you were to take like 100 stocks and combine them into one and average them, that would be a bond. Um, but you can't buy bonds like you can stocks. So what ETFs are, are basically just bonds, but they're, you're able to trade them like stocks. So it's the same thing, but they just trade a little differently. 
and JNUG is an ETF, and JDST is actually the inverse of JNUG. So if I look at this, it's the exact opposite. If you can see this screen, or this daily and that daily, they're almost the exact polar opposite. So once I sell out of JNUG, I can buy into JDST because they're, they're the inverse of each other. So DCIX right here, see how it's bouncing? This is either a really good sign or a really bad sign. Usually they work and um, they'll break out, but lately they haven't been. Is that bottom left corner a highlight of what you have highlighted on the top left corner for DCIX? Do what? Is that this is the daily, this is the month chart, so each one of these oh, candlesticks yeah. is a day. So I'm just kind of looking at, it's gapped up a little bit, but I don't think DCIX is going to do anything because there's no news. Even though it's a super low float, I don't think it's going to move much. Tops, DRYS, DRYS is going to probably drop and then rebound back up. The screen is so big, I can't look over that far. <laughs> And Robinhood's lagging. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, I've been trading on Robinhood, but they have a lot of issues with getting filled and transaction speed, which is terrible if you're day trading. So, what I've been doing is pretty much just swing trading on my phone, and I'm going to be starting a, a Sure Trader account, which is based in the Bahamas, so you are exempt from the PDT rule, and you can you can also short, which I'm. I, most of the stocks I've been watching lately have been going short instead of long, so that'll be a benefit. I'm probably going to drop Robinhood and go to uh, use Stock Trade, which is another uh, app. But what's nice with them is they are you can use your cash account, so you don't have to. You're exempt from the PDT rule, but if you use a cash account with most traders like uh, Robinhood, it takes three days for your funds to go through your bank account and back into your portfolio. With you stock trade, it's only one day, so I can trade each day with the same amount of money that I want. It's just one dollar per trade for fee, so it's two dollars total buying and selling. But uh, they have really good transaction speed, and uh, they're what I've seen in the reviews is they're a lot better than Robinhood. Like right now, I can't even pull up DRYS because it's lagging. Um, actually, now it's popping up DCIX. I'm kind of iffy to even trade because it's lagging. Tops. The only thing you're in right now is JNUG, right? Yeah, JNUG. It's JNUG's an ETF. I'm not worried about. It. It's not going to do any super volatile moves. DRYS. See, Tops is almost exactly the same as DRYS because they're both in just uh, they're both uh, shipping companies. So, as you learn the tickers, you'll learn that you, some are connected to the others. So if one moves this way, the other one's going to move that way too. Uh, that's how like learning the industries and stuff is also a really nice thing to do. So DCIX is shorting. It might rebound uh, off of this old support line and climb back up, but I wouldn't count on it. It's do it doesn't have enough news to move. As long as DRYS rebounds off of that support, it should be good. And we can you can look at the. Uh, it's got a lot more buyers. See, there's forty. There's 20 at almost $4, and there's 20 at 87 Now there's 20 at 95 And looking at the time and sales, see there's a 2,000 buyer right there, 6,000 seller. Mm. Yeah, there's nothing going on. Let's see, I need to make a gap scanner. Yeah, everything's shorting right now. Well, that's rebounding slowly, but AZ, yeah, everything's going short. And this is what I've been seeing a lot lately is uh, it looks like the stocks are going to go long and then the shorts just come in and take it over. They're almost mirror images of each other. So tops, because they don't have news, they're, they're only moving off of DRYS. So whatever DRYS does, tops is probably going to do. Ah, JNUG already hit 18 in the support resistance. I should probably sell out of JNUG. I don't think it's going to keep going up. Check uh, JDST.
This is the uh, inverse of JNUG. So yeah, it's starting to tick up. Uh, let's go ahead and sell out a JNUG. Okay. So I made like 5% on JNUG uh, through the week. That's about it. Tops. Nothing's happening. This is what's bad about. I can't short. I can't. If I had Sure Trader, I could short some of these. Right. But uh, that's part of having not much in the stock game yet. I mean, you got to learn and you got to get your account up so you can actually be able to afford the things that can short. Yeah. I'm hungry. I wish you. I wish Robinhood or uh, you stock trade would allow you to short. They don't. It's probably going to bounce off of uh, this opening. And then then I might be able to get an entry and it'll bounce back up to uh, like $3 or something. But even though this looks like it's not moving a lot, this is uh, you know 18% right there. All the way up to here is uh, almost 100%. It's probably not going to get to $6, but... So what we want to watch for on the one minute is a candle to make a new high, but it's below the EMA, which I don't like. I'll probably wait for it to get above the EMA and then uh, create a new high and then I'll buy in. Because uh, there could be a uh, long squeeze the other way. So there's the, if this closes, first candle to make a new high, does that make sense to you? So all the all these candles, see the open, the high, they're all they're all closing below each other. So the cl close here, close here, close here, close here. So they're all closing down. But this one is now, yeah. So it's flipping. But I'm gonna wait for it to close. I'm gonna wait for the next candlestick to open before I buy into it, because DRYS is notorious for looking like it's going to do something and then it does the total opposite. Fake out. Yeah. It might it might bounce off the EMA though. So that's I'll wait for it to get above the uh, EMA line and Tops is doing the same thing. DCIX is bouncing off of its uh, that last resistance right right here. DCIX has got way more potential to move. Uh, that's 50% right there just from the open to close of yesterday. But they don't have any news. So see the doji right there? That white, that means it's canceling out. The uh, The price action is kind of leveling off. So it doesn't have enough pressure long to break above the EMA. So that's uh, what I was talking about the other day about psychology and thinking about longs versus shorts going against each other. A lot of people watch the EMAs. So... A lot of people, a lot of longs won't buy into a stock until the EMA is broke. So by knowing that, you know that you shouldn't buy in because there's it's a chance that it'll bounce off the EMA instead of breaking through the EMA. And that's exactly what happened. It it didn't it didn't get up to the EMA, so the longs aren't going to get in, and the shorts take back over. So five thousand buy, two thousand buy, one thousand buy, three thousand sell. Yeah, there's a lot more buyers. So this right here, the long wick, means that the seller, the shorts, tried to get it pushed down, but they failed, and the buyers pushed it back up. So this that stick says that the shorts are kind of uh, losing. So right now there's a battle going on between the longs and the shorts, and somebody's going to win. This is the stock's going to move one way or the other. Unless we get to uh, 10 o'clock. Usually 10 to 10.30, the stocks die down and everybody goes to lunch. DCIX is starting to rebound. I could trade this. That's a, a simple 10% you know, right there. There's a lot of sellers on it, though. Uh, at 49 cents and 50 cents. And there's not many buyers on DCIX. Uh this is what happens some days. You just can't trade because nothing's going long. Uh, BTs. I've been watching that. That's that OTC that's been taken off constantly. Need to learn OTCs. They go along a lot more than 
normal stocks. They're also a lot more dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, pros and cons. There's a small little... Oh, that's the rebound from the... So a lot of times when stocks gap down like that, they'll rebound back up. So if you buy at the low, if you can time the low, you can make some money. But they're, I usually don't trade breakdowns like this unless it's like 100% drop or something like that because then the rebound will be a pretty sizable rebound. JNUG's going straight down, so I sold out at the right time. DRS is still doing nothing. DCIX. You can see on DCIX, same thing. First candle will make a new high, it starts to climb, and then you get a doji, and it's going to start tapering down. It's probably not going to break the EMA. Let's see what Twitter is talking about. That's snap UVXY. This guy's a pretty good trader, Mazda, UVXY. Ah, it's a 40. I'm, so I didn't pick this up on my scanner because uh, I'm not looking at stocks above $40 right now. It was a pretty big move yesterday, though, 20%. Yeah, the shorts are starting to win. If it now, if you see it break this right here, it'll it'll tank hard all the way down to two dollars again, probably, because the longs are getting squeezed. There's a lot of people trading this right now. It's already got up to two million, or wait, that's tops, uh, seventeen million. So it's already half of the shares total have been traded today in the first fifteen minutes of. That's a pretty nice bull flag right there. So that's a that's a, a five minute bull flag, and it's this is the one minute. Is that half a minute? Uh, these are five minute sticks. So this is fifteen, the first fifteen minutes, and this is now nine forty six. So each one of these is one minute, but you can see it climbing up and then rebounding. But this is an OTC, so I can't trade it on Robinhood. That's another bull flag right there, Cuda. Dollars two percent. There's a bull flag. Uh, so this is another rebound. It dropped down throughout the past couple days, and then it's rebounding back up. Five percent. Nothing so far. This DRYS is going to do something. If it doesn't, it's going to move at the end of the day, past one o'clock. Oh, J Nug took off. As fast as a ETF can get, go, 1.5%. Probably should, yeah, it had a bunch of resistance there. Probably should have waited for it to break that before it sold out. So that was my mistake right here yesterday, all this uh, resistance right here. And if you go over, that's right where it bounced. So it's not dead? Uh, oh no! The uh, longs are probably going to win because that's a that's a, almost a doji with a long stick on the short side. So the shorts tried to push it down, but they failed and it came back up. Uh, and now it's dojing out and it's it's about to break. Something's going to happen. Yeah, it's if it, it it's either going to go short or if it if it goes above this, the uh, shorts will probably get squeezed. But it doesn't look like it. The ticker tape's going all red. There's 170 buyers at one at 350 though. There's a lot of buying pressure. And then it's it got wiped out. <clears throat> no. So right now it's kind of it's forming a descending triangle. So if I was to draw a line right there to there, and then change it to 
by extension. Once it gets, once this triangle, it's going to bounce and get smaller and smaller to the triangle, and then it's going to break one way or the other. Uh, probably it's going to break south because usually the standard is it's going to break the way it broke the first time. So it broke pre market on the high. So it might, but it's hard to say with DRYS because DRYS is notorious for looking like it's going to do something and it does the total opposite. Same with DCIX, they're, it's kind of creating a uh, triangle. Yeah, all right. So we need to get pre market software. <laughs> we need to get a bigger bank account. <sighs> it's about to hit the uh, peak. See the 500 right there down at 326. So that's a that might be a fake out. That might just be the market makers being fucking with people. 336. So that's way down here. There's 500 uh, buying. So the little box. It's only market makers, and the one on the right is is what. This is the, what is trading right now. This is so some. People are buying 100 shares, selling 100 shares, buying 1,500. So I thought you said, oh, well, you said market makers have more information. Do yes. they only have the short information? There you can look at their charts and they can see where everybody's placing their bids. They can see like clusters of the buyers and sellers and they can move the market to capture those. That's why a lot of the professional traders say don't use hard stops, uh, which are like oh, stop yeah. limits it can, because that's what they, they can, can see it and if there's a bunch of people clustering up at a certain spot they'll move the stock up there and hit it and take the money and then drop it back down looks like the shorts might be going it might squeeze the longs so a good way to picture triangles the more the triangle is up the more likely it's going to break that way so since this is a descending triangle the chances are that it's going to break south instead of north, whereas if it was an ascending triangle, it would probably break north. Oh, wait, here we go. DRYS. Is it going to squeeze? There it goes. Fifty-two. So I'm going to wait for it to break this. It might be a fake out. Um, six, six, sixty. Now it's squeezing. I'm gonna wait for it to candlestick. Well, fuck. Yeah. I should have bought in down here. So my risk would have been low. So <sighs> okay. So here it's it's candle sticking on the one minute. Well, maybe. So now it's on the reverse. The uh, see how the wick is high up here. So the longs tried to push it, but they failed and it dogeed out. Damn, but it got up to three point eight. Yep. That was a 20% move, like right there in one minute. Nope, 10%. Well, yeah, about 12% move. So the problem is, since the stock started high in the day and it came down, there's all these people shorting it. So the people that shorted here, they're, they're sitting there and like, I don't have to sell out because the stock hasn't broke my short yet. So what happens is this, this stock has to fight its way up through all of these shorts before they get squeezed and then it takes off. Makes sense. Would they not have benefited better from selling at the lowest point? The or buying at the lowest point? The shorts. Yeah. Uh they're waiting for it to break south. They want it to break back down to Even here. Further? Yeah. They this stock is notorious for doing that, so any shorts that are in here are probably gonna be confident. I guess if you shorted it right at four to four twenty right there. Yeah. And you sell out at what a dollar ninety? Yeah. So all of this right here, this break was probably uh, squeezing some of the some of the shorts in this area. Now, if this opens, if it climbs up, 
and it starts to candlestick. It, it might break north again, but it's not looking like it. Let's see what Ryan's still in it. What is he doing for Ryan? I don't know. Florida? Florida? I don't know. <laughs> Hot dogs, baloney. <laughs> yeah. What I can do though, with what's nice about, since I spent all the time studying those uh, studies, studying the studies, SAR parabolic. I really like this study, even though I don't use studies a whole lot. So these dots show you the trend, and usually you can see they they work in a fractal, uh, cyclical way. So. As this comes down, these will start getting shorter. So you can predict this length is get a little, going to get a little shorter than this length, and this length is going to get shorter than this. So this stock is really way overextended. The distance between here to here means that it, there's a lot of potential for it to upswing back up. And um, this is a pretty common trend for SAR parabolic, this distance between the candlesticks and the dots. Whereas this one's a little bit overextended. Snapchat's been tanking the past two weeks. What did their stock get up to? It was crazy overpriced. Yeah. That's what they don't have any revenue. They don't make any money. Yeah. They're just, they're huge because. Would have been an easy short. Especially when Instagram came out with stories. I would have, if I had been in the stock market then, I would have easily shorted the snap. Let's say I'm long to Instagram. Uh, nah, Instagram is owned by Facebook, so it's one. Of, it's like kind of like a bond. Even though they have Instagram, it wouldn't take off that much. Um, and Facebook's are an already a big company, um, so it's not gonna. It's gonna have a lot of shares out, and it's not gonna take off. When did Instagram stories come out? Uh, I don't know. It was this year, right? News dates. Let's find out, because I guarantee you, if we look at Snapchats. It was either late last year or early this year, I feel like. August 2nd, 2016. Let's pull up. Uh, Maybe that's just when I got it. Snap. <clears throat> Let's look at the uh, three years. Snap IPO. Oh, looks like they just went public this year. So they weren't, yeah, they weren't public when Instagram. March 2nd, yeah, so. Why did they immediately make when they went public like that? Uh, you'd have to look up the shares that they sold and the price that they sold them at. They were selling for $25 a pop, it looks like. Um, the volume that day was... That's not telling me. Probably a lot. Probably a lot of money. <clears throat> but it would have been an easy short because Instagram stories was from here, from there to here. hundred percent drop in the past three months they're just gonna keep dropping too yeah. so you could have shorted that multiple times throughout all that. Eh, yeah you wouldn't want to stay in it that's the danger of sh like shorting stocks is because they could come out with some new thing especially snapchat and it would uh take off looks like drys so it's getting to be about 10 15 most of the traders are gonna get out of the stock market and do something else but yeah snapchat past month has been going down hard from 20 to 12 dollars 50 percent move all right screw it. screw it let's call it a day um all right nothing really happened today which is what i've been seeing a lot um and it's better to not trade and lose money than it is to uh try and force a trade so I'm going to try to get sure trader. The reason I haven't made any videos is because I want to have a lot of substance to come back and make a video over. Uh, I've pretty much just been studying the past month, reading a couple books. Um, the one I mentioned earlier, Market Mind Games, which is like, it's written by a neurologist and psychologist of like 40 years from the University of Chicago. And uh, she went to Harvard too, I think. It's a fantastic book. Highly recommend it. Uh, another book that I read is uh, the, how to be your daily trading coach. I think that's what it's called. 
and it's also written by a psychologist, but it more it goes more into how to monitor and track your performance, and it gives you ways to do like spreadsheets and other kinds of things. And that might sound really boring and tedious, but from what I've been studying, guys like Tim Grittani, who has made $4.2 million in four years out of, he started with $1,500. Uh, he does a lot of spreadsheets and tracks his um, trades almost religiously so that he knows like where his strengths and weaknesses are. Same with uh, a guy named Steve Ducks, which has made, taken $23,000 and made it into 900000 for the year. He does a ton, ton of spreadsheets, and both of those guys are students of Tim Sykes, which you've probably heard of Tim Sykes uh, if you've done any day, kind of day trading at all. He uh, has been doing it for 20 years, since like the 2000s, and he has his own course uh, online. For, I think it's like $6,500 or something like that. But there's plenty of videos that you can find online of all these guys, Tim Sykes and uh, Tim Grittani. Warrior Trading has a lot of videos. And that's all I've been doing for the past month is just studying everything I possibly can, reading as many books as I can, trying to get a landscape of how the market works. And then I'm building my own strategy. So once I get that lined out, once I get SureTrader working, I'll be making more videos, um, but right now, I, all the stocks I've been watching have been going short, so I can't really do anything because I'm trading on Robinhood, and I can't short, so yeah, I, nothing's really been happening much, um, so that's it, until the next time.